also cost the Pango some time, that one Marcy kill. And he's rotating to the bottom lane, but Pango will probably rotate the top as soon as... Nice dodge. Very nice dodge from Moody. Misses the arrow, though. Still gets tossed in the air. Raindrops will soak up some of that damage. Body blocks the, the life stealer, and here comes Pango from the back with a haste rune. They just killed in your dream in the top lane, and maybe even more for Purple Paradox. Can they get this to work? Misses the swashbuckle, but it doesn't matter. Life still gets the kill. Shield crash for the slow, and Beastmaster level five. No roar. Waves up his arm, and doesn't get the high five, but gets the kill instead, which is much better. He's not. Is he? Is he though? He has a lead, but uh, this time he's not going to dodge the avalanche like he did on the first time. I know we made the rotation to bottom. Something happened, but they were under vision, so Purple Paradox or Army Jesus, they know. Yeah, Rolling Thunder just comes off cooldown as well. Valky can't get the turnaround here. There's the glimpse, the Requiem. Oh, he doesn't roll into the Shadow Fiend. Doesn't even get the chance to cancel it out. Same looking for an opener here. Mavis getting blown up. They cast the Void at the same time. Doesn't give a chance for this uh, Disruptor to live, but Two seconds for Avalanche. No, we could close in the gap. He will be able to. Barrett is coming in from the back as well. Void being cast on the Tiny Tiny has Tulsa available, but the Void slow. Lasts for too long. Can't grab the Pango. And onto the Ender Dream. Oh, a lot of damage from that Swashbuckle. Dyer's that is just an orb of corrosion. It looked like a refusal because it felt like it did a lot of damage. Same way. No, they got the chance to reinitiate. In your dream in trouble. Gonna get bossed around and blown up. Now we've got the tiny three versus one. Avalanche is ready. Arrow is gonna miss, and he is silenced. Can't even get the avalanche off. Now he finally can. Is it enough for a dip kill? No, not enough for a kill. Pango gets his sticks off. That is a double kill for Valky. Big kills for Purple Paradox, and this is starting to look like the team we saw earlier on today against Fnatic. They're leaving the tower up. They're afraid of a rotation. They're like, why is the mid hero missing? Why is there nobody there? Why is Lich teeping there? Something's up. And now Seimei gonna be surprised. Doesn't even get the Dark Ascension off, but he's gonna get the Rolling Thunder and Valky to help him live a little bit longer. Is he gonna live throughout this entire fight though? Maybe he is. Tiny in trouble. Seimei 30 HP goes back into the fight. Oh, the crippling fear runs out. Removing the mischance. Yo, he gets a kill. But same yeah, at least Falky will finish off uh, finish off the tiny. Meanwhile, Beastmaster teleports away. Too many creeps in between. Arrow on cooldown. Marcy can't TP in time. Got two heroes smoked up on the top side. Purple Paradox. They could come in for a wraparound. They see DB in mid. Now they turn around. Well They're waiting. Shot, They're waiting Dyer's in the back line. Same A. No Dark Ascension. And a daytime. Rolling Thunder coming in from the back line. And he gets bounced back. Valky. Oh no. He's going to sell the Marcy soul to his enemies. And the stun's still coming in from Valky. But the timing isn't optimal anymore. He lost so many seconds. He got bumped by this bloody little stair edge right there. They keep their tower up. They trade support for support but it could have been so much better for purple paradox paradox looking for a kill there's the rebound available on top of the beastmaster into the arrow solid combo works out nicely they shot it does a mean amount of damage though this marcy does get the uh, sidekick off at the start of the fight though so life steel will keep her alive varus taken down and db varus both falling down oh the centaur wants this kill the smoke though be big if they find the appropriate target they're pinging the marcy in the bottom lane that is a kill they could go for. Fearless, though. Juking in the trees, but uh, not juking Only long enough. Arcane has been popped as well. Tree toss will finish off the kill. And Purple Paradox thinking about reinitiating here. You're going to get Disruptor down to half HP. Defusal Blade almost takes him down. Same finishes off one. Walks into the weakened Lich. Or sorry, the weakened Disruptor for a second kill. Now heading towards mid. Yo, we in the trees. Same A. He's coming in for a wraparound as the tower's already taking damage. Night Stalker, a lot of movement speed. Yo, with the blink, but the void still connects. Radiant, I scan it for enemies. Fearless Love work, working on his uh, BKB. It takes some time for a Marcy to farm. The only where you can really, only place where you can really do it is in the lane. But Valky going in with a blink, stunning on two. Avalanche keeps away the Dark Ascension Night Stalker for the time being. Roar on the Pango. Can they get close enough? Yes, they can. And he swashbuckles away. The Static Storm was about to finish. Or actually, his ulti was about to finish, but he gets out and still dies. DB with the kill. They'll be coming in with the buyback. They're doing full ham. Purple Paradox diving in. Requiem connecting. The fears are going to be massive. But the Life Stealer is still fighting his way through, but it's not going to be enough. They're going to take him down too. They're going to lose Augie in this fight, and now the Marana on the run. Moody has nothing to give, and Seimei 
Glimpsed backwards and the kinetic field just on point. The Thunderstrike mini stun prevents him from actually escaping as that movement speed for him just dropped so low. He was about to cross the, be the, the border of that kinetic field. Not enough and it costs a lot for Purple Paradox. A choke point fight for army geniuses and they go to Roche. I'm gonna take down Mavis. Battle Fiend. BKB, look at the damage this guy is dealing. He's taking a lot as well, but he's giving them an edge. He's got a secondary life to use. Fearless taken down. DD getting the roar onto the Night Stalker. Arrow connects, keeps the SF away. The big bad Shadow Fiend. He controlled Seimei. He's got Dark Ascension available now, but he's not going to use it as he's about to die. Maybe give them a full sense of security here. Infested Lifestealer inside the Pango. Roar comes out right away. SF on the spot. And so is the Lifestealer. But here comes the big Requiem. Fearless down. Glimpsing the Lifestealer into their hands. And army geniuses. One by one by one. And playing a Lifestealer lineup is never fun. Stark and Lifestealer are the two heroes that are most notorious of having very low impact in a game where you're from behind. Playing from behind and not being able to initiate. If you're not the guys going in, it feels like they just have very minimal uh, effect. It's daytime for another minute. Army Genius, okay, they don't feel comfortable. Forced out the side of Purple Paradox in their base, and now you go for a tower. That's the last tower tower, and again, if Purple Paradox is just in, they're most likely going to be losing. Going to have to let this one go. Luckily for them, the outer towers don't attack. mean much. It's all about the movements and pushing out the... See how well they Radiant's middle tower has fallen. All I can give us. Paradox going for the fight into vision of army geniuses, but if they can get this one to work, it's gonna start with the disruptor. Double force stab, not enough to save him. Lich is down as well. That's a good start for the fight. Without the supports, it's just down to damage. Requiem being loaded up. Roar coming onto the Marcy. Marcy gonna get hammered down by in your dream. Just no mercy whatsoever. Four versus three. Dark Ascension still up for a couple seconds. Blink in, Valky trying to get some damage out. The Avalanche comes out. Lifestealer moving in as well. They want to take down In Your Dream. He's disarmed. He's clipped. He's clipped. He's RTZ. He's, he's stuck there. He ain't going anywhere, but he's got a mad fight against the Night Stalker. Same A. He's going to lose his life in the process. The TP out from the Shadow Fiend. He's gone. Oh, the Cliff TZ move there with the Hurricane Pike. And Paradox. They got a good start for the fight, taking down the supports, but. The damage, you can see how big of an issue it is just trying to fight battle, uh, sorry, just trying to fight damage versus damage. Shadow Fiend dishing out a 4,000 amount of damage plus the Requiem, which didn't actually do a huge amount of that fight, but those right clicks, damn. And now here goes Valky. Here lies Valky. Um, SF would have died there if he doesn't. Eat. Um, you're dealing with the disarm of the pango, now you're gonna... But, yeah, uh, they wanted the, uh, they wanted the static storm so bad. Yeah. Night Stalker. Oh, sorry, the Life Stealer is the one being the focused fire. here. He's trying to hold his ground, but it's just too much for him to handle. Big pickoff. A huge one. A huge... This is the, uh, the pickoff with which you start going high ground. There is no Dark Ascension. A little bit of time, it's gonna be there. But without the Life Stealer, that's even less constant output of... Yeah, he has no buyback. And he also doesn't want to use a buyback if that was the scenario, because that would push him back so far. But since he doesn't even have it in the first place, that's what army geniuses are trying. They're trying to force it out. It caught the Marana. And no Wraith Pact was used either, because it just came off cooldown the same second the Marana dies in the front line. Not that it's going to do any good there when it's already in the middle of the enemy team. Now they're switching towards the top lane as they saw the tier 3 tower they hammered before. It was very low on HP. Again, no we going in, but the silence comes out. And so the BKB, he tries to go for the toss, but he doesn't even have the mana for it. No, he's going to have to disengage and leave. There's a glimpse coming out. Night Stalker is sent back away. And Valky on the full-on chase. Nice force staff for Shadow Fiend. He was his own. Able to move into a different position, but he's isolated. He's alone. He's got the friends of one force staff coming in. They've got the roar. Can they kill in your dream? Can they take down the Shadow Fiend? He's standing his ground, saving for the way. Requiem into the spot. Double kill. They're all dying as they try to get to him, and it's not enough.
Life Stealer also hammered in your dream. Four step after four step after four step. And Valky, the next competitor, has arrived. The next gladiator. They're all dying inside it. Team Wipe. Air Army geniuses. They're too strong. In your dreams, four staff usages in that those fights help them stay alive. Radiant First to the low ground, then he escapes the life stealer, and then he dodges now the uh, the swashbuckle Radiant of the Pango. Pro Barrett possibly that swashbuckle falling. doesn't kill him, but Radiant that's just some, some amazing first footwork coming out from DSF. They use everything on him, and they Mavis and Barris. The arrow on him, and he survives. It's, this game is over. You can call Radiant's GG because you're not getting another uh, arrow. Like it's <laughs> For Gabby. <laughs> Revenge <laughs> for their fallen yeah. teammates on the side of Fnatic. Of course, it is your way to call it out. But yeah, uh, the four staff usage from In Your Dream, yes, but Ferris and Mavis as well. It's just beautiful the way that they're communicating is just, okay, we have these four staffs back off cooldown again, so let's just move you around a little bit so they can't hit you while you're dealing damage to them. And so, our, our Purple Paradox. Yeah, like you said, this game's over. And SF was actually disarmed for like 15 seconds in that fight. A couple of lucky shots, and there was also a uh, a halberd on him, but it doesn't matter. In those uh, six seconds during the duration of the BKB, with just the Morbid Mask lifesteal, he's lifestealing so much because he has so much attack speed, so much damage. It's It was impossible for anyone to stand their ground. You just cannot. You need a... Uh, on this life story, you need a basher, you need a BKB, and you need an MKB to fight the SF. That's way too many items that you're never gonna get. Ah, uh, here we go. Going with, starting with Valky. Beginning of the end, unless Paradox has something to say about it. They're focusing different targets this time. They want everything else. SF is still moving here, but they've lost one of their big cores nevertheless. And here comes the OA again, and SF is here. In your dream, approaching the fight. The glimpse of the same and the big right clicks to fear from the shard. A massive punch to the face of same feared away. A two for one trade off here and straight for the push to take the mega creeps straight to bottom they go in your dream already ahead and the rest will follow 20 seconds for pango 30 seconds for the nice stalker <laughs> okay you can wait for those seconds but you might not have a base to wait into because the mega creeps are there the uh, game is pretty much over at this point purple paradox they only have team fights left and we have seen how team fights went for them against mega creeps there is no split push there is no fighting an advantage they just have to go yeah, tier force down ancient open and exposed Oh, they're trying to come from the back. Mavis down to 200. Oh, the gold scepter. No swashbuckle damage for you today. Still killed off by Moody. It looks like a star storm and arrow. Either one connected. Pipe stealer down. And GG is called. 2 0 for army geniuses. And they haven't lost a single series so far. That will be their third. 2-0 during the group stages. They are going to be tying up second place with Purple Paradox, but uh, with one series less played, they could just surpass them.